So my name is Rabia Nasir, and I like to believe that I'm an artist. Um, I'm somebody who is engaged in teaching, writing, uh, making of art. So everything to do with art. I eat, live, breathe, sleep, art. Um, and I'm an interdisciplinary artist or a multidisciplinary artist, which term they use these days, I don't know. Um, meaning that I don't have a particular medium that I work with. Um, it's usually me looking for the best way of saying what I want to say. Um, so sometimes it's a drawing, sometimes it's a painting, sometimes it's an edible sculpture, um, sometimes it's a performance, sometimes it's a video, so on and so forth. So I don't have a particular medium that I work with. And maybe to illustrate that idea, um, I can share a little bit about the project that I'm working on currently, which is called The Unfinished Stories. And um, for the last three months, um, since January, I park myself at a cafe. Um, I have this little menu which has stories that you can order. So there are six stories in English, three in Urdu that are authored by me. And um, I go from table to table telling people about it. Um, a storyteller at a cafe is not unique to our culture only. It's existed all over the world in every culture historically. Um, but in that context, the storyteller takes a center stage and tells a story to the entire cafe, whereas I don't want to impose my story on, on everybody. So it's only for people who order it um, and they choose which story they want to listen to. And so I go to them and um, it's not meant for the entire cafe, it's just for one table alone. It's a very intimate session. Um, and all stories, most stories, if I can say 99% of the time, are followed by a conversation um, and around the story sometimes. But sometimes um, the audience is very curious and they ask very personal questions and, I, and that's fine. Um, and sometimes they share very personal details. So it's interesting that for me to notice it's um, that a friendship is formed, a very intimate friendship is formed around a story or over a story, which is fragmentary, which is temporary, uh, which is only within that moment. We don't exchange, mostly we don't exchange numbers or there's no obligation of um, staying friends when we leave this space, um, the cafe. And uh, I've been doing it for three months in Lahore at different cafes. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm thrown out of the cafe for doing something like this. I understand that they think it's inappropriate for a woman to go from table to table. Um, and um, that's, that's fine. And some people that I go to, firstly, I ask if I can interrupt because a lot of people don't want to be interrupted. They're there to see their friends or whatever. Um, and they want to have a chat. But So people who say no, I don't um, share the rest of the details with them. Um, but the kind of people I've met over the course of these three months um, and the kind of conversations I've had um, have been very rewarding. And I'm not in any sense doing it like, like a serious art project, although it is a serious art project, um, but I'm doing it more playfully because I am somebody who likes spending long hours at cafes anyway. Um, but, but the way people sometimes react to it is, is also interesting because they think it's very odd for a for a gray-haired woman, <laughs> I'm no longer a young 20, 80-year-old. Um, so they find it odd that she's doing something like this. And then there are the people who, um, who, um, who think that I'm living their dream life um, doing this um, because there's a writer inside of all of us. And mostly um, at the end of a story, um, the listener would ask me if they can read or share something that they have written. So it's usually reciprocated um, that way. Um, or if they don't write themselves, 
they want to share poetry that they like or a, sh a story that they read somewhere and they like. So every storytelling um, is of a different kind uh, because of the people who are, and they're not just passive audience, um, they are participants in many ways. Um, and the other thing is that, um, of course, you have to pay for the story. <laughs> it's 200 rupees each, but that is not to make money in any way because the labor of writing and sitting at a cafe for, for an entire day, it, it's not to sort of match that, but it's mostly um, to make the listener an active participant as opposed to a passive listener. Um, it's to make them sort of look at the menu, choose, think about the value attached to it, which is rupees 200. So um, I've mostly been hanging out at Contra. Um, I, initially, the idea was that I'm going to be at a different cafe every Sunday. Um, but after I, I got thrown out of a few, um, I started returning to Contra a lot because, the way, because of the way they welcome my project and me. Um, it's very heartwarming. Um, so, so I hang out there a lot, but I've done this at Chit Chat, I've done this um, outside uh, Mall 1, the strip where all the cafes are. There are very many interesting anecdotes. Um, I can't think of a particular one which is the most interesting one. But yeah, uh, there, there was a story uh, by the title of Fesla that I read um, to somebody. And he heard the story and later he said, because the, the character in that story, Fesla, it has a character um, who's nameless. He's not genderless, it's a he, um, but he doesn't have a name. So when I finished the story, um, the, the listener said that um, next time you tell the story, name the character Bilal, because this is my story. And so many people have said that about the story, and it's very, like, it's, it's the biggest compliment I think I received, because he was able to relate to it. Um, and that was the whole idea. That is why the character did not have a name. That is why, in fact, when I, uh, when I made the character a she, you could still, yeah, you could still think about a certain things and you could still think of her as somebody else outside of you. But the moment I made him a he, even to my surprise, it was more relatable. So that was one interesting thing. And then I remember I was reading another one. Um, the title is What's Love Got to Do With It? And it's a love letter of sorts um, written to an uh, addressed to an anonymous dear you. And I was reading it and um, the person, there was a woman at the table and she started crying. Um, and I'm not trying to say that my writing was so beautiful that it touched her and moved her. Um, I think she was going through something similar. And that's what these stories are about. Um, to be able to relate, to understand that we're all human and that we feel the same way, we hurt the same way, we feel joy the same way, the same things make us happy. So for the rest of the reading, I had to hold her hand um, and finish the text because of the way she was shrunk. So yeah, I am not sort of claiming that I'm a storyteller of any kind or a writer. Um, this is me trying to explore. Um, and in my case, work is a process. So I don't know what I will do with this eventually, but right now I'm in the process of making the work. And this is me making the work. Um, I think with the storytelling and this not being a, a medium specific artist and then not being a writer yet writing stories and telling stories, I am, um, I think I'm, I'm trying to challenge boundaries and categories. So I don't have to be a writer to doing this project that I'm doing. Similarly, if um, because I do meet a lot of these people who want to read me their story after I'm done reading, and they'd be like, would you be interested? And I'm like, I'm always interested. And so why worry about it? Um, why worry about these categories and boundaries as opposed to the, the, the need uh, behind it. So if there is a need, if you feel compelled um, to write or to make art or to do whatever, I mean, we understand art in a very limiting fashion. 
um, we, our definition of art is very, very, very limiting. Um, and thanks to the, the Western art education, that craft has been sort of expelled from that definition, whereas um, it's a way of living. Um, and anything and everything that's part of that way of living is part of that definition of art. Um, but anyways, so just, yeah, um, if you feel compelled to do or make something, just do or make it. Mm -hmm.